Hey guys, we're back and this time we're going to talk about Endgame in Wilson. Endgame in Wilson is very much like Endgame in any other ARPG. You're hunting for better gear, you're getting more XP to level your skills, get more talent points, and so forth and so on. But there's also a, a couple of other components that we'll cover in this video. And there's mainly two. The first one is upgrading your city, as well as the war table, mission types, and a quick note about gems. And the second part is progress towards Arimon, like you did in the campaign, but obviously it's going to be a lot stronger and you can actually decide the level of difficulty um, that you want to encounter through like a roguelike type of setup where you decide as you progress kind of towards summoning him in Endgame. And this is a repeatable process, but if you've seen one of my early videos where I kill him, I believe he was 118, I mean, there's a lot of loot there to be had. So if you can fight him like that, definitely worth it because you will be showered in loot. And that is always fun in an ARPG. Having said that, let's get started. Okay, so you have completed the roguelike experience in Act 4 and you're now officially in Endgame. I'll show you the way I progress the city. However, there's many ways to do this and based on your situation, you might wanna change it up. The first thing that I do is that I focus on expanding my build. So I want my fifth slot to be unlocked. So that's a high priority for me. Secondly, I want my skills to be duplicated. Many builds require that. However, if your build does not require a duplicate skill, you can postpone this upgrade for later. And I believe during the Act 4 roguelike experience, you will already unlock Seeker's Garrison. So that should be unlocked for you. When you run dungeons, just keep them up, the projects, because you can get a income of gold or regents as you kind of progress the, the end game. After this, get your two points in Gates of Fate. That's your passive tree. Two points is more than zero. Why not? One project that you should keep ongoing are the ones from Stormfall Palace. They just increase your productivity, will make completing projects go a lot faster. In parallel, you will probably want to unlock Refuge for the Blind. This gives you a permanent gold find boost. It's not too expensive. The earlier you get this, on average, the more gold you will accumulate. So keep an eye on this one. Get it early. Then I like to get my shipyard set up. This will allow me to expand my trade so I can get a bigger chunk of primordial affinity. You can also get gold here. This do open up something that um, is vanity armors, but honestly, like, I mean, some people like to look uh, badass when uh, you go through dungeons early game. Then we have the uh, archives. This one is nice because you will sell a lot of loot. So after you've done, you know, the build upgrades, quickly get here. It will actually make your life easier because you'll accumulate more gold and you will buy gear cheaper which usually helps a build when you're starting out with Endgame. There are, of course, additional ones that you can focus on. The Dark Market will unlock more loot for you in terms of regions, but more importantly, it will allow you to complete some of these projects that eventually will lead to Uber Boss encounters, which is the hardest part of Wilson. Then the energy instillator um, allows you to convert gold into primordial affinity. And then here you can convert primordial affinity into gold. I would save this for later because in the beginning you need both resources. So basically you're just swapping them around and you're not gaining any benefits. Then the artifact, I mean, if you wanna boss around with different apocalyptic forms 
hey, go ahead, do this. It's fairly cheap, but I don't feel the need to do that. So I haven't even unlocked it on this character. This is if you're a hoarder and you love stash tabs, go ahead, do this. But I wouldn't do this unless your bank is, is full. The transmutation forge is really a gamble in terms of putting in something and getting something out. I haven't done it too much, honestly, because I feel like the gear that drops is, is good enough for me. But hey, you might hit the jackpot and get something really, really good. The Primordial Institute, the main one. Again, if you feel like you're resource capped, upgrade this one. I haven't done it yet because I'm not resource capped. So this is definitely something to save for the end. So that covers all the upgrades. Now there's one more thing here you probably are already familiar with going through Act 4, but you want to focus on the upgrades to um, fight Ironman and the upgrades that you feel benefits you the most. If you have a really good, strong, geared character, you might actually get away with doing nothing. But look through these and pick the ones that make sense for you. I personally prefer to go with his direct skills and nerf those. The portal areas, the three side areas are fairly easy. Don't waste your money on that. A key part of farming Ariman is to decide which abilities you want to suppress or which one you want to harvest for potential more gear drops or loot drops. You do this just by playing the game, completing missions, which I will talk about later in the video, but this is a nice segment in this guide to talk about this. When you get a prompt to kill one of his lieutenants, that's when you can decide if you want to suppress the ability, remove the ability from his pool of abilities, or if you want to harvest it. You can decide on this every time you kill a lieutenant. The more you harvest, the more loot you will get. When the progress bar fills up, you will launch the event and you will fight the boss like you did when you completed Act 4. When it comes to gems, I would recommend to sell off any low tier gems and always keep the highest tier in your inventory or your stash. As you gain levels, the gems that drop will increase in quality. So unless you want to experiment with crafting that requires gems to force craft a certain affix on a gear, you really don't need the lower tiers. It doesn't benefit you. You always want to slot in your best gem. So just sell off low tier, keep your highest tier. We covered the city menu and upgrades. To complete a project or an upgrade, you would need to go to the war table and then you need to complete a mission. The red indicator indicates the difficulty of the mission and how many skulls you will accumulate from completing that mission. Skulls is basically a way to scale overall difficulty in this game. As long as your build can handle it, accumulate skulls, progress to the next tier, the gear that drop will become better and better and better, stats will go up and so forth and so on. But if you're struggling, you can always farm at a certain tier until you feel strong enough to progress. They have released a unlimited endgame progression where it will just keep going up and up and up and up. And there are some good rewards there to get at the end, mainly more passive skill points for your skill tree. When you select the mission, you will also see the reward type. These can be rare gear, but in many cases it can be legendary and even unique items. So whenever that pops up on your screen, run those missions. There is a lot of missions that you can select from. I will not in this video cover each one of them. I know there's a lot of videos out there that does. I will just mention that there's two mission types you should probably be aware of. The first one is Curse Breaker. Curse Breaker for me is fairly boring. It's 
time gated so you have to stay the full course of the dungeon and follow an npc around i only do those if the gear rewards are worth it if not i will pass if you have a build that can zip around the map you could maybe do some curse breaker to get some treasure goblins however i prefer to spend my time elsewhere the other mission is expeditions i like these for many reasons you can initiate a hunt which is to track down a boss by selecting different modifiers this can actually result in some good gear dropping for you you can get a lot of gear obviously as well as gems to add on that expeditions will provide you with the most gold as rewards as well as productivity having said all that you know what just jump in check out the different missions you don't need to read up on these they're fairly self-explanatory the last and final piece about the war table is consumables these allow you to run maps that you have found as drops they can have some cool uh, rewards attached to them like multiple treasure goblins so keep an eye out for those and guys that concludes the end game guide to volson i am sure there's more things we can add to this however i'm gonna leave it at that for now if you made it this far and you enjoy what you have seen feel free to leave a like and even better you know subscribe to the channel all right take care and uh, see you next time